Hello, this is Dr. John Leonard from Weill Cornell Medical College and New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York. I'm pleased to be here today to give you uh, some updates on follicular lymphoma based on studies reported at the 2016 meeting of the American Society of Hematology that occurred in San Diego in December 2016. So our topic is follicular lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma, uh, as many patients know, is one of the over 100 different types of lymphoma that exist. Follicular lymphoma is the most common of the indolent lymphomas or low-grade lymphomas or slow-growing lymphomas. These are for patients lymphomas that tend to respond to treatment but also tend to recur. They are chronic lymphomas, meaning that people live many years with these lymphomas, and I tend to say that for many patients, though unfortunately not all, for many patients, these are like hitchhikers that we manage. They're along for the ride for a long period of time, and we manage them and try to keep them quiet uh, over many years and deal with them uh, when they're problematic, but in many cases, uh, they are hard to get rid of entirely. So what I'm going to focus on is two studies that are, were presented at the meeting that are uh, employing a new version of rituximab. Rituximab is an antibody, a monoclonal antibody, an immune protein that is engineered to bind to something called CD20, a protein on the surface of B cell lymphomas. Rituximab has been around now almost for 20 years and is a very important advance, has been over that 20-year period, a very important advance for the treatment of patients with follicular and other B-cell lymphomas. And rituximab is commonly administered to patients either in combination with chemotherapy or as a single agent, meaning as by itself. So these two studies uh, that I'll mention in the next couple of minutes uh, really are evaluating a new version of rituximab called obinutuzumab, and that is a, uh, a new version of rituximab that has more human properties to it and which has been engineered to, um, to uh, essentially uh, induce a more strong immune response against the tumor as well as have other properties that, at least in the laboratory, seem to make it work better. So the net of these studies was the first one was presented at the plenary session by Robert Marcus, and this was a study that I had the opportunity to uh, introduce at the plenary session, which is the larger session of the meeting um, that uh, really focuses on the most important abstracts. Took patients with previously untreated follicular lymphoma and randomly assigned them to obinutuzumab plus chemotherapy versus rituximab plus chemotherapy. And the principal chemotherapy regimens were either CHOP or bendamustine. These are two uh, treatment regimens that are commonly used in the initial treatment of, uh, of follicular lymphoma. So the net of this study showed that basically, this was over 1,000 patients, that the addition of obinutuzumab to chemotherapy seemed to be more effective at treating the lymphoma. Now, the way that this more effectiveness was measured was not by survival, meaning how long people lived, but more by what we call progression-free survival, uh, meaning how long the disease stayed in remission. And the net of this is that the vast majority of patients in this study uh, did, did quite well. When you look at uh, roughly three years uh, beyond the, the, the start of the treatment, uh, over 70% of patients uh, we're still in remission, which is reasonably good for this type of lymphoma. The addition or the substitution of the new antibody obinutuzumab uh, seemed to actually make a difference for perhaps five, roughly five out of 100 patients as far as keeping them in remission longer. So one might uh, argue that this should be considered as a potentially new treatment option for newly diagnosed patients with follicular lymphoma using this new antibody in combination with chemotherapy over rituximab. And so I think many physicians and patients will be discussing this as part of patient care. The second study, which looked at this uh, new agent obinutuzumab in relapse patients, suggests that in patients who have been through prior chemotherapy where their disease has relapsed and where it's been 
resistant to rituximab and some of the other treatments, that using obinutuzumab, again, the same new antibody, plus bendamustine, a commonly used chemotherapy, was better than bendamustine alone in this patient population. And in the new data uh, presented at the hematology meetings, the survival, meaning how long people lived, seemed to also be improved in that group of patients. So in summary, these two studies suggest that the use of obinutuzumab, a new anti-CD20 antibody, uh, may replace rituximab for some patients with follicular and perhaps other indolent lymphomas in some settings. So that's something that patients and physicians will need to be very careful about. This new drug also has some utility in CLL or chronic lymphocytic leukemia, but in more aggressive lymphomas, perhaps not so much. And so it really does depend in lymphoma what type you're dealing with to know where and when best to apply uh, this new antibody treatment. And again, this is an important piece of information coming out of the meeting that physicians and patients should be discussing and perhaps modifying treatment programs uh, in the future uh, based on these new data. This again is John Leonard from Wild Cornell Medicine giving you an update on follicular lymphoma from the 2016 American Society of Hematology meeting. Thank you.